You're welcome back to Sports Business with Urufo Izaga. Like I said, I have two foreign investors in the Nigerian Premier Football League um, to talk to us about what they're doing and where they see the MPFL going in, 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 in the future. Uh, first is Mr. Ed Simons, he's the president of Propel Sports Africa, the streaming partners to the league. Hi, hi um, Ed, are you with us now? I am, and thank you for having me back again. Uh, it's a privilege to be on your show. Thank you. It's, it's, it's always a great uh, time talking to you. Um, like you said, this is your second appearance on the program. Joining, Paul, uh, sorry, joining Ed to speak with us is um, Paul Dickoff, the, the Manchester City legend. And I'll tell you what, he achieved legendary status sometime around the 19, in, the, in 1999, I think, when he scored one of the most important goals in the club's history ever. All right, so um, let me welcome Mr. Paul Dickoff. How are you? Thank you for having me. Um, it's 99 seems a long time ago now, and it's 25 years later already. So um, yeah. um, I'm still living off the back of that goal now, 25 years later, and, and long may it continue. I was a very lucky boy. You, you know, I like that. See, that's the one thing I like about, you know, European, um, how you Europeans go about your sport. You know, the fact that you have heroes and then you, you celebrate them for long periods of time. You know, I think probably something that would like to um, encourage in this part because, you know, um, I don't know, I think, you know, most of our clubs need to celebrate, to create legends and stars because these are the, these are the people that bring fans to our stadiums. What do you think? Yes, I completely agree, you know, and I'm, I'm very fortunate um, from my relationship with Manchester City and, and especially the fans, you know, the club. Uh, for me, is one of the biggest clubs in the world now, um, creating history in the Premier League. Again, winning four Premier Leagues in a row for the first time ever. Um, but it's important to the owners, to the fans and to the club that they, they don't forget the former players from before. Mm. Um, it's something I'm very honoured about. And, and you're completely right about um, the NPFL uh, clubs and, and their former players as well. You know, there's been some fantastic talent to come out of Nigeria um, over the last 20 years. Um, and it would be great to see them honoured in the same way from the clubs there as well because the fans want to see it. You know, people mm. um, within the football clubs, the fans are the most important. You know, yeah. um, the owners, the players, the managers, are custodians of the club. The one thing that never changes is the passion of the fans and especially in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, Ed, we feel that, you know, fans are beginning to, you know, um, get warm up to the MPFL. You know, it used to be really bad, but now, I don't know if you saw the, the, the video of the Shooting Stars game. It was a packed stadium. And in Lagos, we had a grand time as well. You know, do you feel that at Propel Sport that the momentum is beginning to build? We, we feel it every weekend, week in and week out. The, yeah. the interaction that we get from the fans through our um, OTT platform and through social media tells us exactly what you're saying, that the, there is a groundswell of enthusiasm mm. that's building up in Nigeria because mm. at last they can see their heroes. Mm. They've never been able to see them before. They've mm. never been able to have the opportunity unless they went to a game. And because Nigeria is such a vast country, where it's expensive to travel around, yeah. you never got to see your teams. Now, on your mobile um, app, on your telephone, you can watch your games, not only in Nigeria, but 20 million Nigerians around the world in the diaspora are able to support their teams. They can watch Sporting Lagos. They can see them and cheer them and get to know them and get to know the players. That's what MPFL Live was intended to be and it's becoming um and um uh, and obviously um we're we're working very uh, hard to make sure that that continues uh, last weekend as paul knows we were very fortunate enough to be um partnering the streaming partner for william truce for the launch of his foundation and we streamed um his all-star charity match to launch the foundation not only in Nigeria, but throughout the world. And we had thousands of people 
tuning in. It was free to watch, and we had thousands of people registering to see it. Okay. That's what MPFL um, uh, and MPFL Live is becoming, and the fans are coming back to the stadium, and it's wonderful to watch. Okay. Now, let's look at the numbers, because that's where, you know, um, you can, that's how you can interest your business partners. What are the numbers looking like now? You know, um, are you growing? Can you give us a sense of the sort of growth that you have, you have we, we, experienced? We, we, are, we are growing. Um, it, it took us um, several months to organize the payment integration. Uh, and in fact, it was a Nigerian company, um, Paystack, and Shola, who of course is the uh, owner of Sporting Lagos, with his technical team that was able to break down all of the technical barriers and make um, the integration with the um, Pixelop system work. So all of the technical brains around the world couldn't make it happen. The Nigerian um, pay company, pays yeah. that were able to do that. Yeah. Um, and so um, we only fully integrated it two weeks ago mm. and there has been the break in the league but we are seeing the numbers grow um, very steadily and well in Nigeria um, and also taking off around the world. Um, yeah. We have to yeah. market that because people aren't aware of it yet outside Nigeria, so that's our next task. But people are talking about it, um, and the word of mouth, as you know, Kenneth, is, is by far the best recommendation. So th there's a general buzz in the air from 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 uh, viewers um, and and um, we can tell from sponsors who are now contacting us and saying how can we be involved for next season? Oh. What can we do to be part of your programs? Yeah. How can we integrate? Um, and obviously, with Paul's experience as being a global ambassador for Manchester City, who have by far the best linked sponsorship program of any soccer club in the world they are they are masters at it in involving them in youth teams in women's teams in the under 21 teams and then of course the premier league team so oh. with paul being a founder director uh, as well um i like to say to him that his global ambassador is only part-time and he needs to be full-time with propel but i haven't been, <laughs> i haven't convinced him that yet is he, so is he doing is he doing any experience. is he doing anything to to further advance your 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 nigerian operations because he's, i mean i imagine that he's a, he's a mini ad ambassador he should be a mini ambassador for the MPFL. He, 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 sh he should, he, he, actually, you tell him, because he should do, he should, you know, when he's, when he's presenting the, FA, the, the, the Premier League trophy, he should also be saying, and by the way, let me tell you about the Nigerian Premier League. But he does. I mean, he's in China. When are you in China? Very shortly, aren't you? Uh, uh, a week today. Yeah, and, next and, Tuesday. And, 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 and he'll be talking about Nigerian Premier Football League soccer. Well, at, at the highest possible level yeah. of, of sports. It's, it's a fantastic asset for us, um, and it, it's his ability and his status that allows that to happen. Are, are you going to be around for the final, the final round, round of games? I'm, I'm talking to, to Paul now. At what dates of the games, the final round? Are, are you going to be around for the final round of, of the MPFL games? The season ending oh, games. Would, yes, I, I would love to be around for that. Um, I've got uh, a little break. We're we're all trying we're all trying to get out, and if Paul's schedule allows him, he'll be um, he'll be with us. The problem is they might want to sign him up to play, Kenneth, and then. You know, <laughs> we, I'm far still, too old. For, far too old he, for that now. Right? Yeah, I can imagine. He, te he, he tells me he's still got it. So um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so let me see if I can pick. Let me see if I can pick um, Paul's brains a, a bit, you know, because um, he's played football at the very highest levels, and so he, I imagine, he understands the way uh, the inner workings of, of of these clubs, how you guys um, win fans and then retain them. What are the sort of things that you do in in Europe or England specifically that you think that we can we can do? to further improve um, 
fan support in Nigeria? Yeah, well, I think first and foremost, the fans, they need to be the, um, feeling that they're involved in the club, that they're part of the club. Yeah. You know, there's, there's too many clubs around the world, um, and include some clubs in the UK in this as well, um, that they look at their, their football club as just a product. Mm. What they've got to realise is that uh, the fans, are the, they're the people that have always been there from whenever the football clubs got um, got started 50 years ago, 100 years ago, mm. till this day and in the next 100 years, the one common denominator that is going to be involved in that club mm. are the fans. You know, you have to look at the product on the pitch. Mm. But you need to make the football club and the players and the staff and everything that we do, you have to make it accessible to the fans. Yeah. And this is why um, the streaming that we're doing um, with Propel Africa, you know, we want to have the fans involved. We want them to watch Nigerian football, not just the people in Nigeria. We want to, we want people on a global basis to see what Nigerian football is all about and how good it is and how passionate the fans is. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're involved in this. Okay. Um Okay, so Ed, what are, let's talk about the sponsors, yeah? What kind of sponsorships um, do you have now? You know, the last time we spoke, you were talking about Paystack. So Paystack apparently has come on board. Um, you had, um, can't remember now. So tell us, apart from MTM, Paystack, what else do you have on your table? Well, we, we, um, uh, we have um, uh, a, a, um, a gaming company, um, the, um, the, I was getting mixed up with the names. Naira Bet, who are uh, who are on board, um, we are negotiating at the moment with a major international uh, drinks company, which obviously uh, I can't name until it's signed. But uh, we are down the line with them. Um, uh, Paul is talking um, to uh, also um, a, a major. A global um, sports um, kit company, um, which we would like to bring on board. Um, the other thing that we have done, which we announced um, yesterday, uh, was um, uh, to bring on to the board as an executive director um, a um, uh, a skin of, of of the famous Nigerian Macaulay family, Vince Macaulay who is the grandson of one of the um, great founding fathers of modern day Nigeria. Okay. Vince has been a friend of mine for uh, 30 years. Mm. Um, and I honestly didn't know that he, he came from Nigeria and grew up in Nigeria. And he was, he is um, so well respected. And he's, he's out in Lagos at the moment with Basil, came over for um, the weekend um, um, met with the president of the NFF with Basil, um, and uh, of course that gives great credibility for us with local sponsors. Mm. Um, you know, we can talk to global sponsors who may not be familiar with Nigeria. They see it as an opportunity, but they don't know enough about it. But Vince, of course. Um, uh, who's grown up in Nigeria, who is part of the fabric of Nigeria, uh, can speak with, with local Nigerian companies about bringing them on board. And uh, we're very confident during the close season and ready for next season, we will be some landing some very interesting sponsors. Okay, so um, I think that, I don't know what you guys are doing uh, to further drive engagement with fans. Um, it, it's a year now. Um, on social media, we all know that social media is very important in, in building um, big fan bases today, not just locally, but internationally. And I think that maybe it would be nice for us to see on a weekly basis some sort of you know, highlights or goals of the week or you know, uh, some sort of analysis, like it's the end of the season, uh, who is going to... Who, who is going to win the title? It's looking like a photo finish. You know, when when do you think you want to start doing stuff like that? Well, you, you could not be more correct. We we you know we had started doing highlights packages. It wasn't working properly. We put it on hold. We are now recommencing it now, and I I'm sure that for the end of the season we'll be doing all of that. You know, a, a review of the season. 
the best goals, the best sayings, all of those things are vital for fan engagement. It's the kind of things that they carry around, particularly on their mobile phones, where they can share it with their friends, they can discuss it, they can argue about which, who scored the best goal, who made the best save. Um, uh, and one of the things that, that, that when you ask Paul about, you know, how do you, how do you move this forward? The fact now that all the games are now on television uh, or mobile devices means that everybody can see that the games are fair. Yeah. Um, they can see that they're properly refereed. They can see that the standard is good. And that creates the confidence. They can't say, oh, this wasn't fair. You know, we, we should have been awarded this and we should have been awarded that. Now they can see it for themselves. Mm. And that that then creates a proper debate. So all of those things are equally of weighted importance. And, um, you know, we're working hard to make sure that those packages, as you're, you're right, social media, there is nothing to touch that now. You, you, can reach, you can reach 50 million people in one shot if you've got the right social media uh, activity. And that's something that we are. Uh, we're working very hard on to make or you sure. could you could bring you could bring Paul to Nigeria and have him play um, a five minute game or something um, with one of the clubs. I'm sure that would be I mean at his age, yes, he's well past it, but he can play five minutes. But, you know? I so could Paul, a, max, a maximum of five minutes. Yeah. I think yeah. I've got that left in my body. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you, you, you know, Ken that that, that Paul's um, son and I'm sure he won't Paul won't mind me saying this. His son, uh, Max, is a wonderful player with Brentford yeah. and has followed in his father's footsteps. So oh, wow. he will be a Premier League star. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have two dick-offs. I've never forgiven Paul for leaving Arsenal. So the fact <laughs> that we're, we're talking about his goal for City, of course, is, is, is really rubbing salt in the wound for me. Yeah. But um, uh, we will definitely, I promise you, um, either for the end of this season or the beginning of next season, Paul Dickhoff will make his debut uh, in Nigeria. It, it will be a good promotion for you, very good promotion for the league as well, you know, because it can expand, it can get people to talk about it, and, um, and that will be good. Now, um, Ed, what about, what about um, your relationship with the league managers, the MPFL board, the NFF, as well as um, the strategic partners, um, uh, GTI asset management. GTI, well. yeah. Uh, look, uh, uh, um, this year has been a learning curve for relationships. Um, we have huge respect for um, uh, GTI um, uh, uh, and Nelson and Obabuka, and of course with Mr. Kabenga uh, at the Premier League. Um, sometimes it's difficult, you know, to 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 um, keep that relationship permanently on track when we are so far away mm. um, and we might try and see how we can be more frequently in Nigeria to meet with everybody. Um, uh, and, uh, but it was a learning curve. We set out to, to break ground for Nigerian football and we think in one season we've done what it took um, B Sky B three years to achieve, which mm. was coverage of all of the games. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, I'm sure there, were, there are times when GTI and um, MPFL and Mr. Govenga were frustrated with us and we may have been with them, but we enjoy a very good relationship with them. And they know um, that um, we are doing our very best, both in terms of time, effort, and money to invest in the best possible outcome for the MPFL, and we know that they've given us their confidence. So um, I'm sure you know there are times when when Sky and and Eurosport etc. have difficulties with the EFL. Um, Paul could tell us more about that. But at the end of the day, it's a working relationship. When there are issues, we work through them, we get them solved, and the most important thing is the product is on air. Okay, let me let me turn to Paul, right? 
Yes, I think that just on Ed's um, Ed's answer there, I think it's important if you look at if you look at the uh, the Premier League as a whole. You know, it started 31 years ago, okay. um, and when it first started in the new format, and Sky came in to do all the TV broadcasting, um, there was a lot of question marks about it at the time. It didn't happen straight away, but now you look at 31 years later, it's now the most watched, um, mm. not just football league, the most watched sports league on a global basis in mm. the world. The viewers that they've got because they've been able to they've been able to go in and they've had time to get the product right and they've built it and the fans all look i'm so fortunate i, I travel to a lot of different countries uh with manchester city and i see how big the, the english premier league is now everywhere china india i was in argentina last month indonesia australia it's huge and that's all came from the coverage that sky first gave the premier league mm. and now for the mpfl Propel Africa, our aim is to, to get these figures up to somewhere near that on a global basis to get mm-hmm. it done because we find that it's so important. Um, not just for Nigerians to watch the NPFL, I think for, for people on a global <laughs> basis to, to see it and to get their team and, and back it as well and see what see what a fantastic how fantastic it can be. Yeah. I th- I think that basically the, the the key the key to the success of, of our game, whether locally or internationally, is to be sure that we get the local, the local support right, right? Because that's very vital. When you watch games on television and the stadiums are packed full, it's from local support, it's not from international support. So people need to know that they need to feel that local support, the energy in the stadium, the atmosphere created. You know, I know I asked you this question before, and I'm going to go back to it because I think that it's fundamental to why football is so successful in Europe, and maybe not so much in this side, part of the world, the communities, the sense of ownership that fans you know, feel towards their clubs, you know, no matter whether they're playing in a non-league division or in, in, in the third tier or whatever, they, they, they always support their clubs. What exactly do you think, I mean, what kind of ideas do you think our clubs need, can you give to our clubs? to ensure that we can, you know, create this sort of community, this sense of ownership of the clubs uh, that we have in Nigeria, from the fans, that is? Yes, I think it's, it's quite simple for me. You have to get things right at grassroots level um, to begin with. Um, you have to get the coaching right um, for these young children coming through. Mm. Um, you have to get the facilities right. And, and the clubs have to invest in that because that's the fans that you're going to have for the future. They are the ones that are going to be supporting. So if you can, if you can capture them at a young age, um, and I'm not saying four, five, six. It could be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm. If the clubs can get the fans involved in the community, in the mm. community part of the club as well, um, community football in the UK is is huge, and it's all part of the grown fan basis to get that fan basis there from the future. And I'm not saying that all the young players at the grassroots level are going to make it as footballers. But there's so much more that football can give back, and football's for the fans. So you have to concentrate on getting the product right for the uh, for the existing fans, but more importantly for the younger fans coming through and get that community aspect about it. Because these are the ones that are going to be supporting the clubs for the rest of their life and creating the passion and and passing that on to different generations as well. Okay, uh, we're going to go on a short break now. Thank you very much for what you, what you have contributed so far. It's been a fascinating program. We'll go on a short break, and when we return we would um, bring it home. Um, so if you're watching now, I'd, I'd advise that you stay with us for another 20, 15 minutes. I'm sure you've had a good time. And um, when we return, more of that is going to continue.